Twenty miles. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to be here. Amen. You would go ahead and turn to the times right now. Go ahead and put a favor in Second Corinthians five, if you would please. And Leviticus nineteen. Second Corinthians five, Leviticus nineteen. Messages we'll look at. It sure has been great to be here. Amen. Man. <clears throat> you say, why in the world would you come all the way from Carolina, Texas to Beach Park, Illinois? I'll tell you why. Because if it wasn't for this church, if it wasn't for Pastor Petrie, we wouldn't have a church. Well, right. right. Amen. We wouldn't Amen. have a church. I'm so thankful for the influence that he has had in my life personally, life of our church. And I was just sitting there thinking, Brother Brian, when you were Talking and talking about Lane Kerr and that kind of stuff. I don't know if I've ever told you this, man, but I sure am glad I'm over the I sure am. I was here. I had the privilege of casting the vote for Patrick Ryan. And I, I'm certainly glad I did that. I feel real good about that program. Amen. 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 I feel really good about it. Amen. Amen. And I was talking to my daughter this morning. My daughter's here. She had the privilege of going to school here for a few years. Man. And uh, I was talking to her this morning, and uh, she was telling me that there was some young girl that she that recently grew up in this church and, and uh, graduated and left, and how she was friends with her on some social media. You know, I, my daughter's got her own child. I mean, I'm a granddad, and uh, you know, she's she's involved in some social media. And she was telling me she had to befriend this certain girl uh, who. She went to school with here at this church because she started badmouthing Biblical Baptist Church, and talking about how toxic it was and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I know you've probably heard some of that stuff, preacher. I know you've probably heard some of that stuff, Miss Gabriel, Miss Mitchell, uh, Pastor Brown. I'm sure you've heard some of that stuff, but uh, she didn't think it was toxic. Amen. She stayed with the stuff. Amen. Amen. It's all glory be to God. Amen. 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 She, matter of fact, loved her preacher so much, she wanted him to come down and marry her. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage y'all, uh, there's at least one young person that doesn't think it was toxic. Amen. 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 So thank you for her uh, the children's church workers that worked with my daughter and all the seeds that were planted in her heart. Amen? Amen. So thank y'all so much. And that's why we came. We want to be encouraged. So good. You're you're more of an encouragement to me, probably though, because it's so great to see faithful folks still here on in what I consider a foreign mission field. Amen. Amen. As far up north is definitely a foreign mission field. Amen. <laughs> and let me keep encouraging you because uh, you know everybody can't live down south, okay? <laughs> and uh, I believe God's going to have a special crown, or special jewels, or something in in a crown. For some of y'all who minister in Antarctica up here in the far mission field. Amen. So you keep doing it. Praise the Lord. All right. Leviticus 19, verse number 20. Let's look at that if we would, please. Leviticus 19, verse number 20. And whosoever lieth heartily with a woman that is a bondmaid, don't miss that. This is talking about a bondmaid here, like a little slave girl. It says betrothed to an husband and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall shall be scourged. Don't miss this. Underline this if you're in the habit of underlining your Bible. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. Father, would you help me just for these few moments to be a blessing to your people? I want to be a, help me to be a help, Lord. They've been such a help to me over the years. I'd like to return a favor now, if you would. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The title of my uh, message is, They Shall Not Be Put to Death. They Shall Not Be Put to Death. Now, not long before I joined the Navy, I got Amen. saved in a Southern Baptist church that I grew up in. And uh, I never really got grounded. I never got rooted and discipled uh, before I left the Navy. And I really just continued to live as an unsaved person would live the first few, few years I was in the Navy. And uh, I hit rock bottom. Uh, and, 
You know, I finally got sick and tired of the party life, and because I had the Holy Spirit living in me, I was just became miserable in my sin, and I was just tired of living that lifestyle, and I asked God to help me, and he did. He, uh, my wife, she's my wife now, girlfriend at the time, or I was interested in her, and she invited me to church. There had been a free will Baptist church that was ministry on the base, doing soul winning, just like we would, Romans Road style, soul winning on the base. And they had invited her, and she invited me, and I, I went for the wrong reasons, but I left for the right reasons. Amen? Amen. Uh, and it was a good church. I ended up, I'd never heard authoritative King James fiery Bible preaching like that. And it was a good church. They had a large, large bus ministry. They had about 12 to 14 buses, and I ended up getting involved in the bus ministry. Brother Howells even preached there, as, lot, as, as well as a lot of other independent Baptist preachers. And they were a free will Baptist church. Now, it took me a while to even, they didn't talk about that much. It took me a while to even understand what that meant and what their doctrine was. But they believed in what they referred to as eternal security of the believer. They believe in eternal security, but they say you have to be trusting in the Lord. You have to have faith in the Lord uh, to have that eternal security. So they believe it was conditional. That was conditional upon a continued faith and trust in Christ. Now, it wasn't works-based, but it was based on a continual trust in Christ, which is actually not eternal security at all when you boil it down, okay? But in their minds, it was, okay? Now, God did use them in my life. He did use them in my life. He used them to come after me. They were the ones that were... Ministering on the base, I learned a lot of standards. I got into King James Bible, I learned a lot of good things from them. God did use them in my life, and I'm thankful also that God had plans to transfer me to Great Lakes Naval Station. Amen. 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 I'm very thankful that God uh, led me to Great Lakes here. Now, when I came here around 15 years ago, I'm thankful that my preacher. When he found out what background I had as a free will Baptist, he lovingly ripped my face off with around 100 verses <laughs> proving unconditional eternal security. Amen. Amen. I'm very thankful for that. He started answering some of my questions, some of the questions I had. Uh, you know, I had questions about well, the book of life and things like that, your name being blotted out of the book. And I had, I said, well, uh, you know, if you had to get saved to get your name in there, and he talks about it being blotted out, you know, uh, I had to reconcile that. There were some questions that I needed answering. And Pastor Peter told me, he said, hey, you couldn't forfeit your faith if you wanted to because it ain't your faith to start with. You right. live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And he started answering my questions. And, and praise God, I got it. I got it, preacher. Amen. Amen. Thank you for preaching God's word Amen. and right. helping me with that and, and right. cutting me some slack and giving me some grace and helping me grow. Amen. I thank you for that, preacher. Amen. I got it. Amen. Amen. Now, unconditional eternal security is one of my favorite doctrines do 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 to preach in all the world. Amen. I, it excites me because we serve the good shepherd. He's really Amen. a good shepherd. Amen. Amen. He's not going to sit there and let his sheep willingly jump off a cliff in the hell. He, he's, he lives up to his name. He's a good shepherd. Amen. It excites me that I serve the good shepherd. Praise God. Amen. Now, uh, I believe we just read one of the many Old Testament verses that is a picture of unconditional eternal security. We just read it. Here we have a, a girl who is basically a slave. She was a bondmaid. She was betrothed to a husband. She was she, she was she was a bondmaid, but she was also betrothed. So that means she was legally married. Basically, she's legally married. Now look at uh, verse two. Verse two is saying that if she commits adultery on her betrothed husband, it said she should not be put to death. She should not be put to death. Now normally. Adultery was punishable by death. Everybody agree with that? Right. Normally, adultery would have been punishable for an average woman, for an average man in the Old Testament. Adultery would have been punishable by death. Now, in this case, she would get a lesser punishment. She would be scourged, but she would not be put to death. 
You say, why? What's the difference? What's the difference between her and any other woman who would have been put to death for adultery during, during that Old Testament law? I wondered that uh, not long ago when I was studying this out, my morning devotions. I, I wondered that, and I said, Lord, this is hard to understand. What in the world's going on here, Lord? There's got to be something here. What is going on here? And it hit me, and I like to have a back to cost them fit. Amen. Now, the difference is that she was a bondmaid. She was a bondmaid. That means she was not a free woman. The Bible said she had not been redeemed. Look at the last five words of verse 20 one more time. The last five words of verse 20. Because she was not free. Amen. Right. Now, since she was not free, that actually meant that someone else owned her. You know what that means? Right. Yeah. Praise God, she's been bought and paid for. Amen. 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 Because she had been bought and paid for, she could not be put to death. Amen. Now, she could be whipped, she could be scorned, she could be punished, but not put to death. Amen. Amen. That excites me. Amen. Because if the authorities put her to death, the authorities would basically be stealing her owner's property. Yeah. 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 He would lose her master, her owner would lose something that he had paid for. Yeah. Right. They couldn't do it. They could punish her. But he said, we can't steal another person's property. Glory to God. Come on. I'm so thankful I've been bought and paid for. Amen. 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 You are not your own, for you are bought with the price. First Corinthians 6, 19. Amen. I'm excited, preacher. Amen. Thank you for helping me get this great, preacher. All right. I'm more excited now than I've ever been about the good master, the good shepherd, the one who bought me and paid for. And I'm so thankful that my faith may fail, but his grip will never slip. Amen. All right. Hey, if you're saved, you're a purchased possession. Right, and I think we ought to be reminded who owns us this morning. I think we ought to be reminded who's purchased us, who's bought and paid for us, and I think we ought to be reminded this morning that there's not a demon crowd alive, Biden himself, Fauci himself, there ain't a person alive that can take that from me. I shall not be put to death. Me, that makes me want to be better. 
You know, if, if, if I had to go out and try to, to, to get somebody to get something they could lose or they could give back or forfeit, that wouldn't excite me too much. Man, you know, I, look, there, there ain't a week that goes by in my life where I don't have to tell my wife or tell my daughter, hey, call me. I can't find my cell phone. And I walk around, dear Lord, I hope I didn't put that thing on vibrate. Please, Lord, let that thing not be on vibrate. And I'm walking around, and I'm listening, and I'm looking, trying to find my phone. Man, if, look, if I could lose it, I would. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah. Praise God, I wouldn't be too motivated to go try to get, help somebody get something they're just going to lose anyway. So... <clears throat> But I love how God balanced this thing out. It says, she shall be scourged. God always, his word is perfectly balanced. Yeah. God said, she shall be scourged. She could not be put to death, but scourged. That meant she would be whipped, punished severely. So again, I love how God balances this thing out. Now, anytime I preach the gospel, I always try to emphasize eternal security. I try to always emphasize eternal means eternal. Amen. Because I don't want them going into it with the mindset they can lose it, because if they go into it with the mindset they can lose it, they're not going to be able to put their trust in Christ. Okay? So, but I also try to balance it out just like the Lord did. He balanced it out Leviticus 19.20, and uh, he, he let us know that there are still consequences for our sin. I try to let them know there's still consequences for sin. It's called a big fat whooping, amen? <laughs> big fat whooping. Now, from my experience, that actually helps people. Because when you tell people, hey, you know, once we're saved, we're always saved, they don't hear us say that you can live any old kind of way you want, but that's what they're thinking. So when you tell them, hey, there's still consequences for our sin, it's just hell ain't one of them. Hell on earth might be one of them. Getting whoopings will be one of them. But I think that helps turn the bright light on oftentimes. So I love the way God balances this out. Now back to that bond maid, if she was free and on her own, she would have been put to death. Think about that. Yeah. If she had not been bought and paid for, if she was her own person, yeah. doing her own thing, right. she'd have been put to death. Right. Yeah. She would have been put to death. So if you were here this morning, you hadn't been bought and paid for, you better get bought by the blood. Oh, Amen. Right. Yeah. You better put your faith yeah. and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You better get saved and you will, you will see death. You will see the second death in the lake of fire. But since she was someone else's property, she could be and would be scourged. I tell you, there's a word we need to get back to. God fear. All right. Amen. God fear. Amen. Amen. You know what fear means? Fear. Amen. You don't have to go to uh, uh, Bible college to uh, uh, get a degree. You don't have to be a Greek or Hebrew scholar. Uh, fear means fear. You know, uh, seven times in the King James Bible, fear is in the same verse as tremble. Fear and truth. So once saved, always say yes to praise God for it. But once a son, always subject to the switch. Amen. Always subject to a big fat woman. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 6. From the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So may we be reminded that we're not our own this morning. We're not our own. All right. Hey, if we have been bought and paid for, you can't wear what you want to wear. You can't style your hair the way you want to style it. Thank God I don't have any temptation there. Uh, and you can't drink what you want to drink. You can't do what you want to do. You can't watch what you want to watch. You can't Google what you want to Google. You can't YouTube what you want to YouTube. You can't all pay for it. Amen. Somebody that bought you. If you're saved. Proverbs 15.3 The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding good and the evil. May we not forget, the eyes of the Lord are upon our search history. Yeah, the eyes, eyes of the Lord are upon our Google machines. Yeah, and young person, this is not the time they playing games. My yeah, brother Coles, David Coles sent me a text the other day. Many of y'all know him. I think y'all support him. Uh, he lives, he's down there in South Texas and Mexico. He sent me a text. And it had a guy doing this number right here, looking outside. said, I wonder what chapter of Revelation is being fulfilled today. Looking to see what chapters be. Hey, prophecy. Look, the stuff that preachers preached about all these years. It's being fulfilled in front of our very eyes. Now it's not the time to be playing church. Amen. Now it's not the time to be looking at filthy stuff on the internet. Amen. We want God to use us. Amen. Amen. We should fear getting our hind parts tore up 
But most importantly, I think we should fear hurting the one that bought us. Amen. Look at our 2 Corinthians 5.14. One verse, I'm done. 2 Corinthians 5.14. That's what we should really fear. Yeah, we want to fear whoopings, but more importantly, why don't we just fear grieving the Lord? Right. Why don't we just fear hurting Him? 2 Corinthians 5.14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. There it is. That's why we do what we do. Right. Yeah. The love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Hey, what we do is not toxic. What we do is not legalism. It's love is all. It's do your best for Jesus is all. It's do your best for the one who died for us is all. That's what it is. Amen. It's let's love and live for the one that bought us. Amen. And keeps us in his grip. That's what it's called. Love is not legalism. Praise the Lord. Amen.